rich is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. And your bed is undefiled when you're married because that's your wife. So what goes on in your bedroom with your wife is perfectly lawful with the Most High God. Read. But whoremongers. But who? Whoremongers. But who? Whoremongers. Whoremongers, Demonte. And I know you didn't know this, but right now you're being a whoremonger if you're sleeping with that woman. If you all are having sex, you're being what's called a whoremonger. Read on. And adulterous God will judge. Whoremongers and adulterous God is going to judge. You got a girlfriend? You got a girlfriend. Let me get you a law real quick. Let me get you a law on girlfriend. We supposed to have, so the reason we went into uh, captivity is because we broke the commandments of God. So now, what's going to get us out of captivity, DeMonte? Keeping the commandments of God. The opposite. Keeping the commandments. If we, if we went into captivity and we at this condition because we broke the commandments, the only thing that's going to get us out is to start keeping the commandments. Well, how can All right? So then as we fall under the law, right? I'm going to get to that, Reggie. Let me let, me, let, let, me let him go and then I'm going to get to you. Read. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. What did God say about marriage? Marriage is honorable in all. No, boyfriend and girlfriend. Honorable in all. No, uh, this is my girl. This is my shorty. I'm, I'm dating her. We going out today. Honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in all. So now we got to come back to keeping God's commandments. We supposed to marry our women. We supposed to marry our sisters, man. You prove for a certain, for a certain period of time, and then you marry her according to the Bible. Read it again. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. And your bed is undefiled when you marry because that's your wife. So what goes on in your bedroom with your wife is perfectly lawful with the Most High God. Read. But whoremongers. But who? Whoremongers. But who? Whoremongers. Whoremongers, Demonte. And I know you didn't know this, but right now you're being a whoremonger if you're sleeping with that woman. If you all are having sex, you're being what's called a whoremonger. Read on. And adulterous God will judge. Whoremongers and adulterers God is going to judge. So now you know that today. So now what's Exodus 22 and 16? You got to what? You got to marry the sister. Is she from one of the tribes? She from Judah as well? Read what you got. This is the book of Exodus chapter 22 verse 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed. So you entice this sister. She's not married or engaged to anyone. Right? We hope. Right? All right. Read. And lie with her. And you do what? And lie with her. So if you lie with her, you have sex with her, right? Read. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. What should he do? Surely endow her to be his wife. And if she from one of the tribes, wouldn't you say she's worth marrying? She's a princess of God. Just like you are a, 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 a king. You're a priest of the Most High God. Uh, Israel means a prince that has power with God. So she's a princess of the Most High God. So you should marry her. Make an honest woman out of her. You understand? Read what you got. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. What did God say? There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. God said there should be no whores of the daughters of Israel. He don't want our sisters to be whored out. Because when y'all break up, what's going to happen? She's going to go find another man. He's going to sleep with her. You're going to find another woman to go sleep with. It's a cycle. Somebody going to get pregnant. Now you got baby daddy, baby mama. It's a cycle. Do we need more of that or less of that? So you had a question. You said, uh, what was your question again? I know, I know you said something about the Old Testament, but you had a question before that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Come here, brother, with the hat. Come here for a minute. You said what now? Right. Right. Jesus came to teach us how to keep the command. Jesus came to give us grace. Let me get, uh, give me grace, Titus. What, which law? Do you kill? Do you kill? So you're able to keep that law. Right or wrong? Hold on, Reggie. You are able to keep the law. Hold on. Do you steal? So you're able to keep the law. So when you say something like, well, we're not able to keep the law, 
That goes, you know what that goes back to? No, honest, I'm with you. You're, you're right. Yes, but do we stay there? Do we stay short? So if I, I have two, you got children, Reggie? So listen, 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 listen. You have children. What about you, my brother? You got children, you look kind of young. All right. You got parents, right? All right. When my child comes home from school and says, Dad, I got D's on my report card. But so-and-so got D's on their report card, too. Am I going to say, oh, you know what, daughter or son, it's okay for you to get D's on your report card because two or three other people got D's on their report card. Am I, oh, am I, am I going to say, no, I expect better from you. I expect you to do better. By next report card, I want these D's to be C's. I want to be B's and then eventually A's. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, I understand what you're saying. We fall short, but that's not an excuse for us to continue in sin. It's, it's, it's a reason for us to actually try and do better for ourselves. Reggie said that uh, we, we destroy for a lack of knowledge, right? God says because we reject the knowledge. You're talking about Hosea 4 and 6. God says he, because we reject the knowledge, he was going to reject us, and he did. Christ came to do what for us, Reggie? To redeem us. Read what you got. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ said, let's get the first part. He said, think not. Like, don't even think, Chris, right, that I come to destroy the law. One law is that when the scriptures is coming out, you got to take your hat off. That's a law. That's actually a law when you read in Corinthians. When you finish, she, uh -huh. she thinks that her hair is her head covered. And that men are supposed to cover their heads. Yeah. Okay, all praises. That's the spirit. Because we come on, sis. We going into that right now. Let's, let, let's get that real quick in Corinthians. Because we're talking about laws, Christ fulfilling the law. But first, Christ said, Reggie, the first thing he said out of his mouth was, Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. First thing he said. The sister said her hair is her head covered. These brothers got their head covered. When the scriptures is coming out, you got that in Corinthians? Read. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. Uh -huh. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, uh -huh. and the head of the woman is the man. So Christ is establishing order. He's establishing order within the Israelite family. He's telling you that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of Christ is God. The head of Christ is who? God. Uh-huh. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. What'd he do? Dishonoreth his head. So right now, we're, we're prophesying out of the Bible. We're prophesying in the spirit of Christ out of the Bible. So when prophecy is going on or prayer is going on, a man's head is supposed to be uncovered. Because you dishonor your head if you have it covered. You're saying that Christ is not your head. So what should you do, Chris? Right now, that with the scriptures that's coming out, what should you do? What should you do, Reggie? Uncover your head right now, like the brother just did. He gave an, ex he gave an example of what we're supposed to do. Uncover your head if you believe in Christ. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. You don't want to dishonor your head, Chris. Our head is Christ. We don't want to, do you believe in Jesus Christ? We don't want to dishonor Christ. All right, read. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered. It's you right here, sis. Dishonoreth her head. What she do? Dishonoreth her head. She dishonoreth her head, sis. So when your head is not covered, when, when the scriptures is coming out, what's your question, sis? What's your question? Talk to me. Talk to me, sis, real quick. Talk to me. What's your, so your question is that your hair covers your head? But look, brother, hold on, Reg, Reggie, I got you. Re, look, listen, sis, listen. Listen. His, he got hair on his head. He could take his hat off, but can he take the hair on his head off? He can't take the head of his hair off. So he would be, according to what you're saying, he would be dishonoring his head by having hair on his head. So God said, you must cover your head, sis. Read it again. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. For that even all one as if she were shaven. Sis, it's like you got bald hair. You should be ashamed to have your head uncovered when you're praying or prophesying. You understand? Yes, that's what's going on right now. Right. What's your nationality, sis? So, called Mexican, you be from the tribe of Issachar. Yeah, read on. Right. Okay. Right. You're absolutely right. So, right now, what's going on, sis, is the spirit of prophecy. The scriptures are coming out, right? 
You agree? So as long as you're in the midst of the spirit of prophecy of praying, because if you with a, a, a group of sisters and you all are praying, right? If one person's praying, right? Does every all say you with two other sisters? One sister's praying. Do all three of you cover your head, or just the one that's praying? The tribe of Ephraim. Yes, sir. No, you good. Come on over here, sir. Right? All three of you would cover your head, correct? Why? Because you're in, the, you're in the spirit of prayer and prophecy. So that's all we're saying right now today. See, it's no different. As long as you're here amongst the prophets and we're bringing out prophecy out of the Bible, you're supposed to cover your head. That's all we're saying, sis. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it, you're talking about in, um, let, let me read it. Okay. But let me read that. Read. Verse 6. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Let her be covered. So you already understand this. It sounds like this. So like right now, you would have to cover your hair because we're reading out of the Bible. When you talk about... Um, braided hair, different things like that, pearls. That, it's nothing wrong with uh, wearing jewelry, uh, dressing up, right? It's nothing wrong with it per se. It's the, it's the vain glory of it. It's the, it's the attitude behind it. Are you doing this to show that, hey, this is who I am? Are you being vain with it? But it's nothing wrong with um, you getting yourself together, dressing up to go out with your husband or, you know what I'm saying? So it's nothing wrong with that, sis. So it's just the context of everything that we read. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 